Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. And today we're talking about sections 4.1, 4.3, and 4.4, Pascal's Triangle. So Pascal's Triangle, you know, Pascal was a French mathematician from the 1600s. And the idea is that we're going to make a triangle where in the nth row and the kth diagonal, we put the binomial coefficient and choose k. And since n choose 0 is always 1 and n choose n is always 1, this means that the left hand side and the right hand side of this triangle are all 1s. But in the middle we see the other binomial coefficients. For example, when n is 4, we have 4 choose 0 is 1, 4 choose 1 is 4, 4 choose 2 is 6, 4 choose 3 is 4, and 4 choose 4 is 1. So Pascal's identity tells you a relationship between what's happening in the nth row and the n plus first row. What it says is that each entry, so for example this number 10, is the sum of the one to the upper left and upper right. So it's the sum of for instance, four and six. And in this video, my left and right may be uh, switched from the way you're looking at it. So if we want to think about balls falling through a grid, it makes a lot of sense that there's only one way that the ball could land on any spot here on the outer edge, because it just has to fall consistently that way. But how many ways could it land on this spot um, Let's do this easier spot, this number three. It could go first this way and then here. It could sort of alternate which direction it's going, or it could go this way and then here. So there are three different ways for it to end at this spot. And what Pascal's identity says is that this number is going to be the sum of the ones just above it in the row above it. So for instance, three is one plus two, or 10 is six plus four. And if you're thinking about the number of ways for a ball to fall to this spot it makes a lot of sense because if it's going to land on this spot with this 10, it either has to come through this spot and there's six ways for it to land there, or it has to come through this spot and there are four ways for it to land there. And so that's the meaning or the interpretation behind why Pascal's identity is true. You can also prove Pascal's identity um, algebraically by just writing out what n choose k is. It's n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And what is n uh, choose k plus 1 it has this more complicated expression. And if you simplify and simplify and simplify that, you'll see that it equals this binomial coefficient. So, um, so the one lemma to emphasize here is that this entry n choose k counts the number of possible ways the ball could have traveled to that location in Pascal's triangle. So we'll skip 4.2 for a minute and instead talk about identities relating to Pascal's triangle. First identity is that the sums are, sum of a row is a power of two. So for example, one plus four plus six plus four plus one is 16, which is two to the fourth. And in general, if we add up the entries in the nth row, we're going to get 2 to the n. At the end of this video, I'll show you a different proof of that using subsets. Another identity is that if you look at the alternating sum of rows, you get 0. So for example, 1 minus 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 0. Well, that's kind of obvious, because the 1s and the 3s just canceled each other off. Similarly, 1 minus 5 plus 10 minus 10 plus 5 minus 1. There are all the entries just canceled each other off. But it's even true with these other rows, and that's a little more subtle why that's true. That 1 minus 4 plus 6 minus 4 plus 1 is 0. And so we'll see why that's true in the next video. So there are some other identities in Pascal's triangle. For example, if you take the squares of the entries in each row, you get an entry which is lower down 
in the triangle in the middle. So for instance, one squared plus three squared plus three squared plus one squared, that was from the n equals three row. And if you add those up, you get 20, which is the entry in the n equals six row in the middle. And so to write out that entry more carefully, we would square the entries in the nth row and we'd get the binomial coefficient for the two nth row, choose n. And we'll prove that later. Final entry is called the hockey stick identity. It looks a little bit like a hockey stick, although I'm not sure the angle um, is quite right. But the idea is that the sum of a bunch of entries, the sum of the from zero to m of the entries in this diagonal is the mth entry in the next row. And this is written in a complicated way because the row is changing. So here's n, n plus one through n plus m. That shows the row is changing. And also zero, one, two through m, that shows the diagonal is changing. And here you get the mth um, entry in the n plus m plus first row. But if we think about the number of ways that a ball can fall to a spot, this hockey stick identity is not so complicated. For instance, what this is saying, we know there are 35 ways the ball could land on this spot. So 35 paths the ball could take to this spot. And we wanna show that's the sum of these five blue entries. Well, 15 of those ways came from here. There are 15 ways that the ball could land here. So really, we just need to show that this number 20 is the sum of these four blue circles. Well, that 20 is the number of ways the ball could have landed here, and 10 of those came from this spot. So we just need to show that this number 10 is the sum of these three balls, or these three circles. And so on, we can need to just show that this four is the sum of these two, or that one is just equal to one. So when we think in terms of balls falling in Pascal's triangle, this hockey stick identity is not too, too bad. So to end this video, I'd like to um, show you a proof of Proposition 4.4.1 that the sum of the entries in Pascal's triangle the nth row, the sum of the entries, is 2 to the n. And so, for example, when n is 4, the entries were 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. If we add those up, we get 16, which is 2 to the 4th. And more generally, we can write this as n choose 0 plus n choose 1 all the way up to n choose n is two to the n. And this expression on the left can be written as the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k. Well, let's remember that two to the n is the number of subsets of a set of size n, the set one, two, up to n. Remember why that was? It was because to pick a subset, we have to decide, is the number of one in or out? There are two choices for that. Is the number two in or out? There are two choices for that. All the way up to is the number n in or out? There are two choices for that. So that's why the number of subsets of s is two to the n. The other thing to remember is that n choose k is the number of subsets of s of size k. And so what this identity is saying is that if you add up the number of subsets of size k, as k goes from 0 
to n, you get the total number of subsets. And let's just remember that when k is 0, you get the empty subset. And when k is n, you get all of the set s. And along the way, every subset has some size between 0 and n. And so it will be counted in one of these terms and choose k. So that's the end of, of this proof. And next time, we'll give a different proof of this identity using the binomial theorem. Okay, see you.